It is a nice stepping stone, though, into section 3.4. So that, that's really nice for us because now we're going to take this, and you'll notice there hasn't been any variables. What we're going to do now is introduce the, uh, the concept of a variable and be able to solve some of these equations. You ready to do that? No. Yeah. You excited to do that? Of course you are. Just lie to me. Go, yes, Mr. Leonard. This is the best ever. You ready? Are you guys ready? Yeah. Yes. yes. This is how no, you, you missed the last part. This, this is, is the best ever. Best ever. Right, best ever. Okay. All right. I'm glad you think so too, folks. I think this is the best ever also. Let's keep going. <laughs> Some of you might have a good time in here after all. How about that? Every day. Every day. I have a good time every day. I think that's how it is. Okay, section 3.4. We're going to continue translating sentences into equations. The words we're using for equals are not going to change. So I'm going to leave those right there on the board because those are, are pretty much it. I mean, we have a few like yields, things like that, that, that pop up there every once in a while. But usually we see the words like equals, amounts to, represents, totals, is, or was. That's really a, a lot of times what happens. Let me give you an example of what we're going to be seeing in this section. But I want you to know that we're doing the exact same thing as what we did just a little while ago with, with these. We're going to be underlining the word that means equals. What comes after that is going to be on the right. What comes before that is going to be on the left. We'll have our two expressions, one on either side of the equation, and then we'll get to solve them, and we're going to know how because we just finished our equations. Oh my. I know, right? My arm got tired writing that. Time to go back to the gym. That's why I'm not an English teacher. Arm is too tired. Five less than four times a number is four more than the number. Wow, if we don't have a technique to do this, that can sound awfully confusing, can't it? Yep. Yeah. So let's use the technique that I just showed you. First thing that we're going to want to do, I want you to read through there on your own right now and underline the word that means equals. Don't say it out loud, just do it on your paper. Underline the word that means equals. What word is that? Is. Is, yeah, sure. I told you is means equals. Here's what's nice about these sentences. Whatever comes after the word is is going to be on the right-hand side of your equation. Whatever comes before the word is is going to be on the left-hand side of your equation. So it separates this into two expressions for us. So after we find the word is, we've got that. We've got our equal sign. This stuff's going on the right, this stuff is going on the left. Let's look at the first part of this, would you with me? We're just going to consider five less than four times the number. Notice how it breaks it into a smaller piece for us. Let's just work on five less than four times the number. What's some words that mean math? Less than. Less than. Less than. Less than. What's less than you? Subtract. Subtract, okay. Now, listen. This was a special one. This is a special one. With the less than, this is not going to be five minus. Remember, five less than, five less than means after you do everything, you have minus five. Does that make sense to you? That's what the less than means. Five less than something means, if you, if you have five less than 20, you had the 20, right? And now you have five less than that. You have 15. So the five less than comes at the end. So when you're writing this out, yes, it's minus, but you know what I'm going to do for the less than? I'm going to put like a minus five, because I know that's going to the very end of my problem. Okay. 
Five less than, what else means math up here? More than. Times. Oh, I'm working just on this, this section. Times. times. Four times. Times means, oh, well, times means times. times. It's kind of nice. What else means math up there? A number. A number. What's a number? A variable. And we want to pick, how about Q? Have we ever used Q? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh. What haven't we used? G. How many have used? G. H. What? H. H. I like H. My G's end up looking like nines, so yeah. H. Like it. Let's do the first expression, okay? We have five less than four times a number. So what we're gonna do, what I, what I know about this is that whatever I have, I'm taking five less than that. So minus five is gonna be right there. Now what am I taking five less than? Oh, well that says four times a number. Let's write out four times a number. What am I gonna write? Four H. Now we should be able to read this first part and read this first part and have it make sense. Five less than four times a number. Here's five less than four times a number. Fo nudge your head if you're following me on that. Okay. If you reverse these, is it going to be the same? No. If we do five minus four h, you're going to be completely different answer. Be way way off. So writing these properly is pretty important. Now we've done the first one. This was just an expression for us, which we've practiced already. We have the word is. That means equals. We just now have to focus on everything after the is. Four more than the number. What words mean now? More than works like less than. So is it going to be four plus or plus four? More than works like less than. So is it going to be four plus? Or at the very end, is it going to be plus, plus four? Plus it's going to be plus four. More than comes at the end. More than something is, that, or less than something that's after. And then the number one is the number. H. Good. Whatever you picked first. So in here, if we have four more than the number, I know I have the plus four. That's at the very end, and I have this H up front. Can you solve that? Yeah. Do it. See if you solve that. Just on the, the last part, if you like, I mean, because it says to do it that way, but if you do it the other one, it still work. For the more than, because addition is commutative, yeah. this one wouldn't matter so much. For yeah. the more than, the, yeah, the subtraction, thing, yeah. I mean, that really matters. That's why I want you to get in the habit of writing the thans afterwards, that way you don't get those confused. You know what I mean? I would hate for you to say more than and do it one way and then less than and have to think about it being opposite. That's just annoying. If you've already finished solving the first one, you may start working on that one. I'm going to give it to you in just a minute after I, I solve this. That person works. Okay, so 4h minus 5 equals h plus 4. We know how to solve those now. What's our first step in solving this problem? Good, smaller variable. It's already combined, right? There's no like terms or anything or on different sides. Smaller variable is h in our case. We'll subtract h from both sides. Three h minus five equals four, and the next step. Good. So constant term. We're getting rid of that. I'm going to have to move over here. I don't want to run out of space. We're going to have. 3h equals 9. Our last step is always to divide if we have a coefficient. So we're going to divide by 3 on both sides. 
H equals 3. Raise your hand if you got H equals 3. Good deal. Okay. Try the next one. I want you to set it up in, in symbols first. Underline the word that means equals. That one should be pretty obvious in this case. Underline all the other words that mean math. Whatever comes before the equals goes on the left. After the equals goes on the right. Make sure you set it up properly and then solve it. I'll give you about a minute to do that. Have I already given you the homework for 3.3? Yes. Uh, to get started, uh, Yeah. Okay. We were rewriting it before the. Mm -hmm. Talk about it. Underline the word that means equals. Well, in that case, the word that means equals is. That was kind of nice. Whatever comes before that equals goes on the left, after equals goes on the right. Let's deal with the before. 8 less than 3 times a number tells me something about some math. What does it tell me? Uh, 3 times a number. Okay, I heard less than, I heard times, and I heard a number. A number, let's pick a number. You? I like the D. I like the D. I was thinking D, actually. Let's we'll use that one. Okay, times. Well, we know times means, well, times. Less than. Eight less than. Is it going to be eight minus or minus eight? Minus eight. Good. The less than goes afterwards. If this hit said, uh, 8 minus, then that would be 8 minus, or, or the difference of 8 and, then 8 would come first. But if it says less than or subtracted from, that than and that from mean afterwards. So this is minus 8. Let's work on the first part. I know I have 8 less than, that's minus 8. 3 times a number means 3d in this case. Equals, we got equals. 5 times the number, I know times is multiply. The number we were talking about is d, so we have 5d. Would you raise your hand if you have exactly that in your paper? Well, no. Well, I mean. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but I mean a variable, you know. The only thing I can't have you put is something like 8 minus 3 times your variable. That would be a bad thing. You can't have that. Tell me the next step. What are you going to do? Get rid of the Which is? 3D. Subtract your 3D. Negative 8 equals 2D. Divide by 2. Cool. Negative 4. B. Negative 4 equals your variable, whatever you had. Ladies and gentlemen, how many people feel pretty good about what we talked about today? Good deal. Now, this is going to lead us into some more equations. We'll talk, start talking about that tomorrow. Well, let's get started on the first one. Again, our idea is we're going to try to translate this like we did last time into an equation, and then we get to solve it. And, and the, the plan was we're going to underline all the words that mean math, and we're going to start with the word that means equals. On our first sentence, what word means equals up here? Yes. Good. What we learned last time is that everything before the is goes on the left. Everything after the is goes on the right. So on our problem up here, we're going to look at the before. That breaks our problem up into just two expressions, and that's kind of nice to deal with. So our first expression is 6 more than twice the number. Give me some things that mean math in that expression. More than. Okay, more than. What's more than mean? Plus. Does it mean 6 plus or plus 6? The more than, the than. Does that go before or after? After. It goes after. So the more than... What this means is that you're going to have something, and you're taking 6 more than that. So it will be plus 6 at the very end. That more than and the less than work that way. You've got to have that down right, especially for the less than. The more than is not so crucial, but the less than is very important. More than, okay, what's, what's, what else up here? How many do you do the number? Six? Less than. Um, less than would be minus 6 at the very end. Some. Some, good, we have some. I'm talking about the first expression, though. Why oh. you know? Well, what's twice mean? Two times. Good. So two times, twice, two times. And a number. What's a number next? Variable. Variable. Okay, going old school with the X. 
Got it. Six more than twice a number is. So let's work on that part just right now. Six more than twice a number. Six more than, that was the not six plus, it was plus six. So here's what this says to me. It says six more than says plus six at the very end. What am I taking six plus? I'm sorry, what am I taking uh, six more than? More than two what? x. Two x. So this equation should be two x plus six on the left hand side. Do you have two x plus six? Yes. Look, if you put six plus two x, it will work out just fine on this particular problem. However, if I had given you six less than, you have to have that in a certain order because subtraction, unlike addition, it's not commutative. You can't switch those things around. Addition, it doesn't make any difference. I'd like you to write in the proper order. That way you get used to this idea. That's, that's the whole, I, whole thing here. Now, the second expression is the sum of the number and nine. Give me some words that mean math. I think you already said. Sum. Sum means? Um. Of the number, we got to use x there, and nine. So the sum of the number and nine, we're going to write, which comes first, x or nine? X. X plus nine. Would you raise your hand if you got that far? Good for you. Can you solve that? How would you solve that? Good. What is the lower variable here? 2x. So I'll subtract my x. I've got x plus 6 equals 9. Last step, we're going to get rid of the constant term. We subtract 6 from both sides. x equals 3, and we are done. Do you always have to subtract the variable first, or can you subtract 6 first? It's appropriate to subtract this or get rid of the smaller variable first. That way you understand where your variable is going to be located at the end. Because other times, if you got rid of the wrong number, then you're going to start moving stuff around even more. And that's kind of annoying. At least extra steps, we don't want to do that. Okay, let's continue. We have the sum of 5 times a number and 4 yields 6 less than 3 times a number. What is the word up here that means equals? Yields. Yeah, that was one that we don't see very often, but I want to make sure you saw that. So we have our equals, whatever comes before that equals, before the yields is going on the left hand side, after the yields go on the right hand side. Let's look at the before. The sum of five times the number and four, tell me some words that mean math in that expression. Sum. Sum, of course, means plus. And what else means math? Times. Times. Yeah, times is kind of nice. Times means times. A number? Variable. How about? B. B. All right. Let's work on that first part. The sum of five times a number and four. <coughs> the sum of five times a number and four. It's written in the appropriate order for us. Sum of five times a number four means five times a number is going to go first and four is going to come second. What comes first on the left hand side? Five, five, five. B plus four. Five, Five times a number plus four, or the sum of five times a number. We got the left side down correctly. Let's look at the right hand side. Right hand side says six less than three times a number. Y'all tell me what words up here mean some math. Three times. Three times the number B, but less than. What does less than mean? Does it mean six minus or minus six? That's going to be at the end. Yeah, the less than says, whatever you have, you're taking six less than that. So after everything is all said and done, that's when we subtract six. Not just have you're still with me on this part. Okay, so here we're going to have something, something, minus six. What's the something, something? Six less than what? 3B. Three, three, three. Good, that's our three times the number. And can you solve that? Yeah. Sure. To solve this, we're going to get rid of the smaller variable. In that case, that's our 3B. So we'll subtract 3B from both sides. We'll get 2B plus 4 equals negative 6. And the next step is to do what? Subtract 4. Subtract 4. Good. So 2B. Equals, how much is that going to equal? Negative, Negative 10. 10. Perfect. Use an addition rule there. And last step is always to divide if we have a coefficient. So last thing we're doing here is divided by 2. We're done. 
Would you raise your hand if you're okay with this translation stuff? You can expect something like these two problems on your test. You will have something like that. Now let's see if we can apply this to like a real life word problem. Have you guys ever been to like a concert or a sporting event? Yeah. yeah. You ever bought tickets online? Yeah. Usually, they'll charge you something called a convenience fee. You ever charge a convenience fee before? Yeah, it's not that convenient. It's not convenient. <laughs> it's not that convenient. Yeah. Usually, they will charge you a convenience fee. Now, this company does something different. What they say is, I don't care how many, t and usually it's by the ticket is how they, they typically do it. So here's $3 per ticket that you got to pay me. That's cheap. Yeah, that's, that'd be really cheap. Here's what this company does. They say, I don't care how many tickets you buy, what we're going to do is charge you a flat fee of nine dollars and fifty cents. A flat. What's a flat fee mean? It's always the same. One for all. Right. all Good. The whole so no matter how many tickets I buy, all I'm getting charged for is nine dollars and fifty cents plus the price of the ticket. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. So the flat fee means it doesn't really change. That's how this company works. So if you buy one ticket, you pay nine fifty extra. Buy two tickets, you pay nine fifty extra. You buy a hundred tickets, you pay nine fifty extra. That's how this company. It, it does their business. So let's write this out and see if we can determine part of this problem. You see, you went a long time ago and you bought your tickets. But you actually don't remember how many tickets you bought. So you're going to go invite some people, but you don't remember how many tickets you, you purchased. All you have down on your receipt is, I spent a total amount of money. Let's see if we can work backwards and figure out how many tickets you originally purchased. That's the premise to this question. So a ticket agency charges a flat fee of charges a flat fee of nine dollars fifty cents plus fifty seven fifty per ticket. Your bill was five hundred twenty seven dollars. know is how many tickets did you buy? Say you forgot. We don't know. How many tickets did you buy? We're going to do the same way we set up these word problems. We're gonna read through, read through, and we're gonna read through, read through, and try to find <laughs> this. Stuff. We're gonna read through and try to find these words that mean mathematics. So, let's look at that. Ticket HG charge a flat fee of nine dollars fifty cents. You all okay with the word flat fee? Yeah. Yeah. Because it doesn't change. Flat fee of nine dollars fifty cents plus fifty seven fifty per ticket. Your bill was five hundred twenty seven dollars. How many tickets were purchased? The first thing I want you to do, just like we did over here, go through and underline the word that means equals. What word up here means equals? Was. That's the past tense of is. Is and was mean the same thing. So the word that means equals is was. You alright with that? Yeah, I guess. Guess so, Jeff. Guess so. So we have an equal sign. Here's what's nice about these word problems. Everything before that is goes on the left hand side of our equals. Everything after the is goes on the right. Let's look at the thing after. So blah, 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 your bill was $527. What's going on the right-hand side of my equation? So that's it. That's nice. <laughs> on the left-hand side comes everything before. Ticket agency charges a flat fee of $9.50 plus fifty seven fifty per ticket. Tell me some words up here that mean mathematics, please. Well, that's kind of nice. We know plus means plus. That's easy. But there's another one up there that's not so obvious. What now? 
Charging? Oh. Would it be the flat feet part? That's an important part of it. That means it's not going to change. Well, there's another word up there. No one said yet. Per, per. Say that again? Per ticket. Per ticket. That word per means multiplication. So if we're, if we're talking about per, or it means per each, per each ticket. So that word per is kind of important for us. What that means is that however many tickets I have, I multiply that by 5750, and that's my cost for those tickets. Are you with me? So that, that per suggests for, for each ticket or a multiplication part. So let's try to write this out. A flat fee of 950, flat fee means it doesn't change. That's a constant. Constants don't change. So I have the 950. Tell me what else I need to write. Plus, because it said plus, and then what? Okay, 57. Why T? Why are we using a variable here? Oh, okay, so we don't actually know how many, so we do have to use a variable. Let's see if this makes sense with our, our equation here. This says $9.50 flat fee. Hey, there's flat fee. <coughs> plus, plus. $57.50 per ticket. That means for each ticket, you are going to charge $57.50. $57.50 T. That's for each ticket, you're going to charge $57.50. Is or was equals $5.27. Do you guys feel all right with getting this word problem? Hey, can you solve that? Yeah. Sure. Of course you can. Now, we haven't really dealt with decimals, but this is a good introduction for us. What's your variable? T. We're trying to get everything away from the T. What's the first thing we need to do? Subtract the 950 from both sides. Good. That is our constant term. So if we subtract 950. We get 5750T equals, you can use your calculator if you'd like. If you have a calculator out, go ahead and use that. How much is 527 minus 950? 9.50. Say that again. 517.5. Perfect. Now on your calculator, what's the next thing you'd have to do to solve this problem? Divide 5750. Okay, so our coefficient in this case is 5750. If we divide both sides by 5750, you're getting kind of an introduction with decimals right now, showing you that it really doesn't change the, what you do when you do with decimals. If we divide both sides by 5750, these 5750s are gone. We are left with T. So with your calculator, do 51750 divided by 5750. It should work out even. Nine. Nine. So what this says is, if you had a bill and you knew you'd tra get charged a flat fee and 5750 a ticket, you could find out how many tickets you originally bought. You say, oh, I bought nine. I'm going to invite eight other people. We're going to go have a concert or whatever you're doing. For this time. Raise your hand if you're okay with these word problems and the translating sentences into equations. All right. Hey, we're done with 3.4.